Um, our next speaker now is somebody who um, probably is not mentioned enough in the book. Um, he's somebody that I don't think that we can really comprehend how many hours and how much effort he put into organising the community to oppose the East West Link. So please um, make Socialist Party Councillor Stephen Jolly welcome to San Thanks, everybody. It's a great honour to be here with Anthony and all the Socialist Party members here in Melbourne and everyone else for this book launch tonight. It's a, it's a, a concise, it's an insightful and it's a very, very exciting read. I think there's two people that couldn't be here tonight that it would be uh, wrong for us to not to acknowledge that played an absolutely crucial role in this fight. That is Frida Watkins, the founder of White Cat, who was one of the founders of this campaign in general, who passed away. And of course, the founder of progressive planning and urban policy in this city, in this country, Dr. Paul Meese, who the very first time I met him had Marxist capital, called himself a Marxist, by the way, on his table. He would have been, as would have Frida, so proud of all of you and of this community for what they have done. They wouldn't have really believed what, we've, what you achieved over the course of the past period. So please put your hand together for the memory of those two heroes of this campaign. I think this book is based on objective fact, and I have to say that's unlike some of the narratives that have come out since the victory over the course of the past few months. And we invite you to look and test and discuss that historical fact. It's also based on an historical perspective because, of course, this area, and one of the reasons we're so proud of this area, is that this campaign didn't come out of nowhere. This area of Melbourne has for many, many decades, and also in recent times, had so many successful, brilliant community campaigns. Just in recent history, the, fight, the successful fight to save Richmond Secondary College from closure, Fitzroy High School, the Fitzroy Pool, you know, the massive campaigns in Richmond in recent years to save community centres, the fight to save St Andrew's Kindergarten, it was moved to Clifton Hill. All of these historical um, struggles, which were all successful, by the way, to one degree or another, laid the historical basis for the victory of the East West Tunnel campaign late last year. But the most important thing in this book, in my opinion, as a socialist, as a Marxist, is the very, you know, unfashionable use of the word and the explanation of the role of leadership. Because that is something that we are not st um, standing away from. Because every time a community goes into battle, what do they face? First up, in this country, in this city, they face a political establishment. Whereas they say in terms of the Republicans and the Democrats in America, but it's increasingly true here in Australia, that the Labour Party and the Liberal Party are two, two wings of the same party, two factions of the same party. We all know the role of the Liberal Party in relation to the East-West Tunnel campaign. But we must never forget that it was the Labour Party, this was the love child of the Brumby government, this East-West Tunnel campaign in the first instance. And when they, when, when they were forced to pull the pin on it after winning victory last November, what have they done? They're now talking about handing over $1.5 billion, not for public transport and a railway to the airport and an expansion of underground railway system in Melbourne, but towards transurban, for a connection, a private toll road in the western suburbs. If that doesn't tell you about the political establishment that people face when they go into battle, nothing else does. And that political establishment, as we saw in this campaign, is supported by the soft power of the media. Who can forget of the role of 3AW, of the Herald Sun, and the role and the, and the headlines about Mel and Anthony and Meredith and many, many other people in this campaign. But also supported by the hard power of the Victorian Police Force, which were a free security agency for the contractors and for the government, rolled out at will hundreds sometimes in the morning during the course of the pickets over the course of this campaign. And behind that soft power, behind that hard power, and behind that government lay big business. We only see today, actually, the OECD released a report that was in this morning's media that the top 10% of the Australian population, the, the richest 10% of the Australian population, own half the wealth in Australia. And your John Hollands and your land leases, they were pulling the strings behind all of this over the course of this campaign. And what the question of leadership comes down to 
is that just as much as they have leadership and they are trained and skilled and have a memory, when they go into battle with the community over whatever it might be, whether it's a public transport issue, whether it's a wages issue, or whether it's any environmental issue, we need the same. Because the, one of the key points in my view, having read this book and helping to edit it, is the role, it outlines the role of leadership in terms of when we got the council to put in serious money to make this campaign a real campaign. When we pushed hard in the community for pickets, which were not known to people, people weren't used to p genuine pickets in this area or anywhere really in Australia in recent times. When we focused three quarters way through the campaign on the, seeing the Labour Party as the weak link in this campaign, and if we put pressure on them, we could make them crack as we did in the run-up to the last state election, which ensured us victory. So that's the key point in my view of this book, because everything else I think is easier to understand, but the point of leadership is absolutely crucial. The last point I want to make is very simple. In all of the campaigns that have happened in the past, that are happening now, and that are happening in the future, there are two types of people involved. The backbone of the campaign, the majority of the campaign, is made up of people who are pissed off about what the issue is about. They're going to lose their home, like Keith in uh, uh, Bendigo Street, or they're going to have their school closed down, or whatever it might be. They're the people who have been brought into struggle because of a particular issue that will fight to the end as those people did and many, many others did. And those people will always find a friend in the Socialist Party in the period that we're moving into. But there's another increasing minority in the, in the community, especially of young people, who are seeing that behind the East-West Tunnel campaigns and the education campaigns and the refugee campaigns lies a rotten, dirty capitalist system that would drive us down into the ground, into Indonesian living standards, if they had their way. And they are involved in this East-West Tunnel campaign, not because they were going to lose their house, or they were, particularly, you know, they were particularly personally going to be impacted by this, but because of a broader social conscience. And those people, I say to you tonight, if you're here, you have to be organized, because you cannot have that conscience, that consciousness, and not be organized. So read that book, read between the lines of that book, and get involved in the Socialist Party so we can have even more bigger victories ahead in the period that we're moving into. Thanks for Anthony for writing this book. It's so important to codify our wins, because they could get forgotten if you don't control the narrative and codify the wins. Thanks for coming along tonight. I hope you enjoyed, and please buy many, many copies for all your friends. Thank you. The book's available online on the Socialist Party website, sp.org.au. It's also available in bookstores. Readings are going to be stocking it. And other good bookstores in Melbourne will also be taking it in the course of the next few weeks. So, yeah, we'd love for people to buy it, read it, discuss it. But also, as I said in, earlier on, to mimic the types of struggles that's explained in that book. That's how we're going to beat back big business interests, not just against road projects, but against you know, all sorts of things where, where big business is dominating aspects of our lives.